Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Wow, look at this. It's all clean. We weathered a storm. We got to see Salty have a better attitude. We're going to see Salty in a minute, but today I want to teach you a verse that's a praise. That's true. Well, we'll see in a minute. Look at this. Psalm 1071. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Can you say it? Let's say it all together and we'll give it a good go. Ready? Psalm 1071. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. All right, we can, do, we can do it together, right? This is a praise. So let's make sure that we're raising our voice to God and over the ocean. Ready? We're gonna one, two, three. Psalm 1071. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. There you go. Let's see if let's see what Salty's doing. Hmm. Me, me, me. Hmm. I think I hear him. Alright, let's see. Let's see where where is Salty? I can see Salty. Oh! got a little energy in him today. Hey, everyone is here again. You sound pretty happy. I'm happy, 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 happy. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> what are you so happy about? I got to looking around and I have no idea why I was so upset the other day. Things weren't nearly as bad as I thought. Well, tell us about it. Well, for example, there's my crackers. Your crackers? Sure. I was really upset because the storm made my crackers all soggy. That made me upset. But the wind could have completely blown my crackers away. But I still have them, even if they are soggy. I still have something to eat. Besides, soggy crackers aren't all that bad. Well, I'm glad you were able to find something to be thankful for, even in, when times are tough. Me too. I felt terrible when I was upset with everything. But it feels so wonderful to be thankful for things instead. You know, that's our verse for today. It's about being thankful and it's a praise to God. Really? Yeah, listen, we're going to say it for you. All right, sailors, let's say it for Salty. Psalm 1071. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Isn't that a great verse? Yes, it is. That's exactly how I feel. I am so thankful. I would like to learn that verse. You want to learn the verse? That's a great idea. Let's, why don't you say it to the sailors? Here it goes. All right. Psalm 107, 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. We can sure be thankful that God's mercy doesn't last just a short amount of time. His mercy lasts forever. That's a long time. Forever is a long time. I am so thankful that I just feel like singing all the time. No, no, no. I'm sorry. We can't listen to you sing today. Today it's time for, right now it's time for you to go. Oh, yeah. okay. I'll have to sing for you later. We'll see you. Bye, Salty. Bye, Salty. Bye, Salty. Bye. Bye sailors. See you tomorrow.
right, I'll move this away. I don't need this. All right, so excited? Yes. Good week, good week in VBS? Yes. Yeah? Good job with the names. You got all the names right. Hope you'll remember mine tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so all week we've been listening about who? Jonah. That's right. So God asked, go ahead. What is it? What time is it? Okay, that's coming later, okay? Just after this. So, we have Jonah, and God told Jonah to go to where? Go ahead. Nineveh. Nineveh. That's right. But what did Jonah do? Where did Jonah, Jonah try to run away to? Go ahead. Okay, he got on a boat, and where did he try to run away to? Kyle? It begins with a T. Anybody else knows? A town, okay, close. Go ahead, Libby. Tarshish, that's right. So Nineveh was on this side of the world, and Jonah got onto a boat, and he went the other way. What was Jonah trying to do? He was trying to run away, run away from God. Can you really run away from God? What did we learn? Why, why, why can't you run away from God? That's true, but why can't you run away from God? What did we learn on that first day? Exactly. He's everywhere. God is everywhere. So you cannot run away from God, right? God is everywhere. He sees you. And that's the next part that we, that, that we learned. He tried to run away from God. And what did he do? He got into a ship and he went into the ship. And what did he do? He went to the lower deck and went ahead and slept. Slept, right? He tried to sleep. Sure, we're getting to that part, okay? So he went, to the, he went to the ship and he slept. And he thought that he was going to hide from God. But what did God do? He brought in a storm. He brought in a storm and they were caught up in that storm. And like Pastor said, they were those, those sailors who were there with uh, Jonah, they were all big men. They were all grown-up men, very good, able sailors. But they were afraid of the storm because it was so huge. They thought that they were going to sink. Now these men, did they know Jesus? Did they know God? No, they did not. Kind of. They did not know God. These men, they, they believed in false gods. But then they had the hope that at least let me go ahead and pray to these gods. These gods will try to save me. Right? So they were doing that. And in that process, they were looking around and they saw Jonah. What was he doing? Sleeping. And so they went and caught him and said, hey, we are going to die and we are, going, we are praying to our gods to save us. You are here sleeping away. Can you also go ahead and ask your God to save us? Then Jonah realized what is going on. He really felt there is something going wrong. And he realized what God was trying to tell him. He tried to hide from God, but God sees everything, right? God sees everything. And God works everything also according to his plan. God's plan for Jonah was to go to Nineveh. But he was on that ship at that moment. And God put him right at that moment for a reason. And we got to know even that. What happened? Jonah went ahead and said to those folks, Hey, I made a mistake. God asked me to go there, but I, I'm on the ship. I'm trying to get away from God, hide from God. What you can do is throw me overboard, right? Throw me overboard into the sea and probably God will save the rest of you. So they went ahead and believed him and then they, they threw him there. The moment Jonah touched the water, what happened? Everything calmed down, right? Everything calmed down and that was the moment God used that as an opportunity. Why? 
because the rest of the sailors saw what happened and they immediately trusted in God, in the true God. And they said, Jonah's God is the true God. Let's go ahead and worship him. And they, at that moment, everybody trusted that Jonah's God is the true God and prayed to him, right? So God used even that opportunity, even that instance where Jonah was trying to run away from God, he used that instance to get those sailors to believe in him, right? So now Jonah is in the water and this is yesterday, right? We've come to the point where we've now into the water. Did God just leave Jonah there? No. What happened? He prayed. He prayed. Did he pray immediately? He's now in the water and God had mercy on him. Right, right. Not in, in the water, but, but he prayed somewhere else. We'll get to that right now, okay? So there was a big fish, right? A big fish came in, swallowed him, swallowed him, and he was inside the whale's belly for how long? Three years and three days. Three years and three days, yeah. No, it was three nights and three days, but good job, Josiah. That's way to go, okay? Three nights and three days he was inside, and God gave him that opportunity to think about what has happened so far. And so he, Jonah decided to uh, pray, repent and pray. Pray to God and ask for another chance. Our God is a God of second chances, right? He did not just shy away from Jonah, but he wanted, still wanted to use Jonah. So when Jonah went ahead and truly repented, truly repented of what he had done, and then prayed to God for mercy, God, led, God gave him that opportunity. What happened? The, the, the fish went to shore and vomited him up, out, right? And spit him out, yeah, the best way to put it, spit him out, and Jonah washed himself on the shore, and then he took that long journey. What did Mr. Estabrook say yesterday? Like that journey was, Kyle? It was 20 or 40 days. Um, not really 20 or 40 days. It was a three day worth of journey. It was a long journey and he gave an example. Do you remember the example? Yeah, anybody? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, exactly, yeah. From the airport to the to short pump, right? Imagine walking all the way. He took that journey. He went ahead, took that journey. He, re he reached Nineveh. Now, now, Jonah was a good preacher. How do we know that? God used him. He went there and he preached. And when he preached, what happened? The entire city of Nineveh turned. What did Jonah say to them? God is telling you 40 days. That's the time that I'm going to give you. 40 days. If you are not going to repent of your evil works and turn back to me, I'm going to destroy this place. No. Right? So imagine a preacher coming to the United States, to this entire nation, right? He comes and he, he, he goes out preaching, saying, hey, repent, repent, United States. What you're doing is wrong in front of God's eyes. 40 days is the time that you have. And after that, this nation will be no more. Can you imagine that? And the president of the United States comes over and he, say, he kneels down and he says, as a nation, we are sorry about what we are doing and we want to get right with God. And he asks all the people to join with him in prayer, fasting and joining together and saying, we'll all we'll get rid of all these evil works that we are trying to do. That was, an, that was the effect that happened in Nineveh. And that is the effect we want to have in our nation as well, right? Even today, we need that same revival in our country that people should repent of their sins. We should be uh, examples to them and they should repent of their sins and turn to God. So that's what happened. The people of Nineveh repented. The king proclaimed a fast. The entire country was in revival. So we come today and we think about how would have Jonah felt? How should have Jonah felt? After, I mean, he was the preacher. He told the entire country to repent, and they all repented. So he should be happy, right? After all, he accomplished what he was sent to do. But that's not what happened. Let's see what the Bible says. 
It's there in Jonah chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. It says, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. He prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore, I fled before, from before you unto Tarshish, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful and slow to anger and of great kindness and repentest thee of evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Can you imagine that? The preacher who went and preached to the nation, the nation repented, but Jonah was angry. And he says that, I ran from you, God, because I knew you would do this. I know that you are merciful, that you cannot do such an evil thing. You cannot destroy all these people. And that's the reason I ran from you. Now, God, please take my life. Wow, what a response. Jonah threw a pity party about himself, right? That's what he was trying to do. He was focusing on himself rather than focusing on what God was trying to do with him. But do you think uh, God ran out of patience on him? No. God was, like he mentioned, that he was so patient and kind. Uh, God was merciful to him. So God just asked him one question and he said, Jonah, is it good? Is it a good thing that you are angry? And Jonah was not pleased. He was so angry that he probably just walked away from God and he went out of the city of Nineveh and he went and sat in a different sat in a place that was outside the city and he was waiting and watching. Ah, let me see if God will change his mind. Let me see if he will go ahead and uh, destroy this uh, nation this nation which is full of my enemies, right? You know that the Israelites were enemies to the Ninevites, right? And that's why Jonah was even more angry that God did not destroy uh, Nineveh. So he was outside, he made himself a makeshift shelter, and he was sitting there all day, and he spent the night there. And in the night, you know what God did? God's patience did not run out on Jonah. God still wanted Jonah to think about what he was doing and whether he was, he was right in being angry with God. So in the night, what God did is he made a, a bushy a plant that, that, that grew over the shelter. It had large leaves all over it. And so it spread all over and it grew up over him. In the morning, Jonah was still there the next morning and he was still looking to see, will God destroy the city? Let me see. And Nineveh was a very hot place, you know, it was right next to a desert, okay? On the east side was a desert. And he was here and the sun rose and was beating down like it was probably a day like uh, probably two days ago when it was really hot, right? You all felt the heat, so it was really hot and he was so happy to have this gourd or this plant which, were, which had grown up over him and giving him all the shelter. So. God was watching. He wanted to see if uh, Jonah will be at least thankful and uh, change his heart. Nothing happened. He was still there. So God sent a worm. You know what that worm did? Walked right. It went right next to the, uh, the plant and started gnawing on it. <laughs> it killed the plant. It killed the plant. And all those nice shade and big leaves that were on him, it all withered away. Jonah was still there. He felt the heat. He was still there, and God brought in a strong east wind. And I told you what was in the east, right? There was a desert, right? It was really hot over there, and God blew that east wind on Jonah. And you imagine, right? You are sitting out in the sunlight, it's beating down on you, and you have this hot air that's coming against you. Jonah really got very uncomfortable, and he started uh, moaning about his situation and he said, oh, that plant, oh, that plant which gave me a lot of shade, oh, if that was there, I would have had, a, um, I, it would have been pleasing for me right now. I would have been comfortable, right? So God used that opportunity also 
And then he talked to him, he talked to Jonah and he asked him, and this is what uh, the, the, the Bible says. Let me go ahead and find that place here. Yeah, Jonah, um, God said, then, then said the Lord, dost thou well to be angry? So Jonah went out of the city and where he, where he went and he got that shelter and all that. And then finally it, it says, and it came to pass when the sun did arise that God prepared a vehement east wind and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah and he fainted and he wished for himself to die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. So God spoke to Jonah and said, Jonah, you feel so sorry for this plant, but don't you feel sorry for this, this entire nation? There are nearly 120,000 people in this nation who have souls which are eternal. What do I mean by that? When you live in this world, you, you, you live in this world, and when you die, you are either going to go to two places. You either go to heaven or you go to hell. And that is not determined based on what you do, but based on someone else who had sacrificed his life for you. I'll get to that in a moment. But then God asked him, Does it, is it good for you, Jonah, that you feel bad for that God, but not for these uh, people? God's thought process was different. God was looking at this as a people who needed God, right? A people who needed mercy. But Jonah was looking at them as their enemies. He was more worried about the plant rather than those people. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us if Jonah truly repented and he felt sorry for the people. But then, we are like Jonah today, right? All of us here, um, have you ever thought about somebody whom you, don't, you, you, you didn't like, but then you felt that they didn't deserve God's mercy? Have you felt... Uh, uh, anger at God because someone uh, did something wrong to you and then God did not take care of that person. You felt that God had to punish that person. We are all like that, but we should, we should look at it like how God looks at it and how God is merciful. God wants each one of us to be merciful, right? That is the main lesson that we want to learn out of this, where we should not be like Jonah trying to I think of others as our enemies, but as people who need God. Why do we need God? Uh, the Bible says we are all sinners and we need to be saved. We cannot be saved by ourselves, but only Jesus who came and died for our sins. The only way to be saved is to believe and trust in Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 5.8, God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We became enemies with God when we sinned, right? But God had abundant mercy on us. He did not think of us as enemies, but he came and died for us and he showered his mercy on us so we can be saved. And the Bible also says that um, the wages of sin is death, right? But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God's gift to us is eternal life. We cannot obtain that by our good works. We need to trust in God. So the great mercy that God is showing towards you, will you accept that mercy? I think it is one of the most important decisions that you can make in your life. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Pastor. And as you ponder over these things, think about these things as you make an important decision in your life. Oh, thank you very much, Jason. Appreciate that. I have a story to tell you. This is off. Did you know that? Or is it better? Pretty dead. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Um, hey, I have a story to tell you. Uh, we learned over and over, and we learned again tonight, that you cannot hide from God. And that's true. But you know, you, you can't really hide from sin either. Did you ever think about that? Sometimes we try to run away from sin. We try to conquer sin on our own. I heard an amazing story about a, about a guy who liked to go camping. He went out camping. He was all by himself. He was out in the wilderness. And what happened is he had food, but a bear came up to meet him. I don't think this is a true story because the bear could talk. But anyway, the bear said to the camper, I want some food. The guy said, okay. Okay. 
He gave the bear some food. The bear went away. Problem was, the bear came back. He said, I want some more food. And the guy said, okay, well, I have some more food. This is all I have, but you can have it. He was afraid of the bear. He fed the bear. Bear went away, satisfied. He came back very shortly. He said, I want some more food. The man said, I don't have any more food. And the bear said, that's okay. I'll eat you. And that's what sin's like. When we give in to sin, we can try to give in a little bit, think we can hide from it, think we can run from it. There's no way. We can't. Sin wins. The only one that beats sin is God. Jesus Christ died on the cross by being defeated, you could say, by sin. He was crucified. He was murdered. He, was, he suffered. He died for sin. He took the full brunt of the judgment of God on sin into himself. He was cursed, the Bible says. He was made a curse. And then he rose from the grave. Now, why did he do that? He did that because that's the only way that sin can be conquered. And Jesus died and rose from the grave. So anyone that chooses to sin is choosing no. They're saying no to Jesus. We are either saying yes to Jesus or we're saying no to him. But when we say no to Jesus, we're saying yes to sin. There is no other way to live. There, there is no other way. We're either living for sin and ourselves and our what pleases us, or we're living for, for him. Uh, what about Jonah? You know, our brother told us at the end of that book, it really doesn't say what happened. It doesn't say. God is reasoning with Jonah, but it never says if Jonah responded to that. We learned at the beginning that Jonah was trying to hide from God. He was sinning. He tried to hide from God. He tried to run from God, and God wouldn't let him go. Praise the Lord. God sent the storm. God sent the, God sent the fish. And then Jonah prayed. Praise the Lord. God gave him another chance, as we heard last night. Praise the Lord. He came from wherever he was with the boat all the way back to Nineveh, and, and, and he got deposited there by the fish. And he went in and he preached. But then what happened? He was angry. The Bible says furious. He was so angry. He was not angry at sin, and he wasn't angry at Nineveh. He was angry at God because God was merciful. And that's what our brother was saying. Sometimes we can get angry with people. We can be angry with how they treat us or angry with how they act or angry at other things at people. All that anger is ultimately directed at God. It's all at God. We can't hide from God. We can't hide or run from sin. The only way, whoops, sorry about that. The only way we can conquer sin is by submitting to Jesus and let him fight the sin. Same thing with the devil. God tells us, hey, with the devil, submit yourselves to God and resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But Satan doesn't run away from us. We're no threat to him. He runs away from Jesus when we submit ourselves and hide uh, in him. This is really serious stuff. And we don't want you to grow up to be Jonah. <laughs> we want you to grow up not to be like Jonah, but to be like Jesus. Because, you know, we put Jonah here. And that's great because that's the name of the book. But really, the book of Jonah is not really about Jonah. It's really about God, isn't it? He's the hero. So here you go. I want to ask you a couple questions. We're going to bow our heads and close our eyes in a minute. In a minute, we're going to bow our heads and close our eyes. I'll give you the opportunity to raise your hand in a moment, making a decision. Now, let me be as clear as I can possibly be. The Bible says that God the Father sent God the Son to this earth, and his name is Jesus. And he came to the earth, as we just said, to live a perfect, sinless life and yet be killed in our place. And Jesus went through all of that, and then he rose from the grave. Why? To take our sin to himself and be punished for our sin. What we deserved, he took. The debt we had, he paid. The question is, will you admit your sin and trust Jesus and experience his mercy? Now, maybe you've already done that. If you have, then that's wonderful. You still need to admit your sin because you still, you still sin, you still fail. But the difference is, after you admit your sin and trust Jesus, then Jesus helps you to run from his sin and helps you that you can hide in him. We want that for you. We don't want you to grow up and be like Jonah. We want you to grow up and be like Jesus. 
do you want do you want to admit your sin tonight and trust Jesus as your Savior? Let's bow our heads, okay? Would you bow your head with me and close your eyes? We'll just be nice and quiet. We'll be done in just a few minutes. We'll give you an opportunity. Who tonight would say, I want to admit my sin and trust Jesus as my Savior? If you want to do that, we're going to put you with an adult that show you from the Bible how you can trust Jesus as your Savior. If you would like to do that, would you raise your hand? Okay, I see your hand. You may put it down. I'll come over to you in a minute. I see that hand. You want to as well? Do you want to? Okay, you can put your hand down. Do you want to? Now, did you raise your hand last night? I think you did. Okay, you can put your hand down. I saw your hand. Who else? Anyone else? I see a lot of hands. Okay, good, good. Let me ask again. Listen carefully. The question is, do you want to admit to God your sin and trust Jesus as your Savior? That's what we're asking you to do. We're not asking you if you love Jesus. That's great, and I hope you do. We're asking if you want to admit your sin and trust Jesus. Okay? You be just very quiet, and I'll talk to some people and ask why they raise their hands. Anyone else want to raise your hand?
on the ah. Sorry. It's on a little bit. Okay. So we've got lots to do in a tiny little bit of time. So we're going to go really fast. Okay. Who remembers the verse from the first night? Who can raise their hand and say it? Mercedes, I saw you first. Perfect. Let's say that together. You ready? Psalm 89, 1. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. Who remembers day two? Hannah. Yes, good. Okay, so let's say it together. Ready? Psalm 1038. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenty in mercy. Ready. Lord, be thou my helper. Psalm 32. Okay. It's going to come off. There it goes. Okay. What about tonight? Who knows tonight's verse? I know, I know it. What is it? Do you know it? Not yet? Okay. Anybody else know it? Yeah, very good. Okay, so here is tonight. Say it with me. Psalm 1071. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Very good. Okay, let's do. Which one? Or what you just said. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, here we go. Ready? Let's do Together We'll Serve the Lord. Let's do that one. Sure. Well, actually, we might not need it for this one. We know this one. Do we need it for this one? No. We don't need it for this one. Uh, we don't need it. We're good. Okay. okay. So, you're fast. Yeah. <laughs>
out whose class is going first tonight and I think I'm the one undoing this thing <laughs> sorry okay let's see how about hmm 